film. Get ready. First up, Margot Robbie. <laughs> to start with you and also congratulations on all the nominations for all of you. Yeah. Yeah. Margot, you were the person that bought the rights to Barbie and I am just so curious, what was the meeting where you, with your production company Lucky Chap, sat down and said, this is the thing that we should do? It was about five and a half years ago, maybe even six years ago now, and we sat down with Inon, the real-life head of Mattel, who is nothing like Will Ferrell, actually. <laughs> he actually is a lot like the Terminator. Um, and he, I, he just reminds me of the Terminator so much, and he's just like, he's, he just crushes everything. It's amazing. So he was very on board with kind of trusting us to make the movie, you know, kind of in, in a wonderful way, he was like, this is your domain, so you, you tell us, I'm like, I think it should be Greta Gerwig, I, should, I think it needs to be like this, I think it has to be kind of like, not avoiding some of the complicated things about Bart, you know, we kind of, we're pretty honest in that first initial meeting about what our approach would be, but more than anything, we kind of wanted to reassure him too that, you know, that there's a 60 plus year legacy of this brand, and we would be honoring that, and, you know, it, it's like, it was all going to be done with love um, and at the executed at the highest level with the best people that this industry has. You know, we have the most incredible HODs on this film. Rodrigo Prieto, our cinematographer, and Sarah Groom. I mean, every single person who worked on this film and, of course, our cast is just the very top. So, yes, in that initial meeting, I didn't know exactly what this was going to be because that's the genius of Greta and Noah. Um, I just knew what the intention was and what I thought the potential of it could be. I'm really curious, was there ever a meeting with Mattel where you had to kind of fess up to what you were really going to do? Mm. And what did they say about it? We had so many meetings. Um, if you could just be a fly on the wall for some of the meetings we had, uh, it was... Because of course the, the, the script was bonkers, and and if you think about how like kind of weird it is what you just saw, like imagine that on the page, and everyone didn't know what it was going to be to begin with. So, yeah, there were a lot of meetings where we had to really get them comfortable with being very very uncomfortable, and, and they were they were amazing about it. And what kind of feedback did they give you after seeing it? Were they delighted? They had to be, surely. I mean, it's the highest grossing movie globally last year, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean it was, it, it's a process, obviously, in the edit process, and it transforms and evolves all the time. Um, but it seems, sitting on this side of the movie, that it's obvious that this was going to work out. But even up until a week before this released, everyone was kind of white knuckling it. Everyone, like, no one, you just don't know if it's going to work or not. You don't know if it's going to hit or not. You don't know how people are going to respond. And and thank God it did. And, and most of you believe that it's going to, but there's a big part of you that is worried that it won't. And... Uh, you know, the money people especially are probably worrying about that. I am. So, no, I mean, everyone was excited when they saw it, but also terrified and, and 
you know, it wasn't until it was literally out in the world and doing what it ended up doing that everyone suddenly was like, well, of course a Barbie movie worked out. <laughs> you know, did, no, <laughs> we didn't know that at the time. But. I did hear that you hid in a theatre bathroom to listen to what people were saying <laughs> about the film. Yeah. Yeah, that could have gone very badly too. Um, it didn't. But it was fascinating, and I, I yeah, I would go around to theatres on weekends and just watch people coming out and kind of like listen to what they were saying and see who. And just, I mean, it was an amazing experience, and I had this brilliant experience. I was in a pub in the middle of nowhere in Scotland, and I listened for about thirty minutes to a group of guys on a bachelor party discussing the Barbie movie, not knowing that I was sitting two feet away from them. And it was just truly fascinating. And, and there was, you know, people who at the table who refused to see the Barbie movie. There were people, who, you know, one guy was like, dude, it's, it's a cultural moment. Don't you want to be a part of culture? And the other guy was like, I'll never see it by the end. He did want to see it. I mean, it was a whole, it was a whole thing. And really, people's reactions to the movie has been the biggest reward of this entire experience, whether it's having a moment like that, or whether it's listening in the bathrooms, or whether it's seeing what people are writing online, or even just seeing like how much pink I can see in this room right now. It's just those moments are, are what makes it, yeah, like it's what makes it so... I've never been a part of something like this, and I probably not not like this. Like not, I, you know, I've done comic book stuff, and you know, and that gets a big reaction. But this felt very different. It still feels very different, and I I can't think of a time when, uh, yeah, I've, I've, a movie's kind of had this effect on on culture, and it's amazing to be kind of in the eye of the storm. I hope you went up to those guys in Scotland and said hi. <laughs> I wasn't going to, and then I did. <laughs> I, at the last minute, as I was walking out, I went to the table and I was like, thank you for seeing the Barbie movie. <laughs> it was very funny. They lost it. It took a full minute for them to realise, and I was practically out the door, and then they were like, oh! <laughs> it was very funny. Ryan, I um, was watching an interview that you gave previously where you said, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, forgive me. You said something about having read the script and realized this was going to be really hard. And you said something like, how do you play a 70-year-old crotchless doll? Is that <laughs> Um, so I am curious, how did you set about, I mean, there's, what are you basing this on? Like, what do you think, what, what's going through your head when you're like, how am I figuring out Ken? And what were the conversations you had with Greta and Noah about that? Well, even though there was, there is no, it's true, um, there are no books you can read, um, no biographies on Ken, <clears throat> no documentaries, um, there's really nothing. <laughs> we did have this brilliant script that was just um, so layered, so deeply thought out, it was just so like f unexpectedly philosophical, it was like you know, I think Greta is, does she have a, a degree in philosophy? She should. <laughs> but it's so, it was like, it's almost like, I don't know, is it like Descartes who said, I think, therefore I am? But it's like she was going, okay, she took it one step further and she was like, I can, therefore I beach. <laughs> <laughs> but there was this layer to the humor where it was like so, she's so like, deeply understood how she could use comedy to facilitate a more serious conversation. And so it just, she started it, you know, there was so, no one ever had the thought, I wonder what Ken thinks. <laughs> and if anyone did, they let it go very quickly. It was like a waste of time. But she just said, no, I'm going to dig really, really deep into this. And, you know, she found such interesting and beautiful thing so it was it was that was there that that work had been done um, and then it just sort of became like sort of trying to we started a kind of because she was in London a kind of a text exchange really that was sort of just photos and um, it ended up looking like what I imagine Ken's Instagram would look like <laughs> had one. it was just all these kind of weird inspo it's sort of like 
like it's almost like battleship where you're kind of trying to guess like where the other person is and and I would send like a picture of like the Barbarian Brothers from Maxim or like a Muscle Fitness magazine from the 90s that I remembered as a kid. She'd be like, okay, but maybe more like this, and then she would send like like a picture of like that guy from the Warriors, you know? And then I'd be like, all right, well, what about this? And I'd send the Ultimate Warrior, the WWF, and she'd be like, yeah, but maybe it's a bit more like this, and then she'd send that guy from Xanadu. <laughs> and it's the same guy, by the way, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm getting a connection. There's a theme here, and it has to do with that actor. He's the Rosetta Stone. But anyway, it ended up... And then there were... She would send a horse lamp or a bunch of spoon sculptures and she'd be like like this and I just felt so honored that she trusted me to understand what like a wall of spoons might mean for this character what, what did it mean <laughs> just you know if you if you don't know you don't know <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's pretty obvious <laughs> It was a very unique process, and uh, we got to this, you know, we, we got there. I will say, though, that um, something, the portrayal of Ken is, it's so nuanced, it's hilarious, but also so sad, because it's not, of course, only women that live within these expectations and stereotypes, and his self-esteem is so paper thin because of that, and I, I feel like this film is... This is why the global appeal is not just for women, it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like so little is said to sympathize with that exact scenario of stereotypical stuff. Yeah, it, 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 when we were filming the I'm Just Ken musical number, I remember going behind a crew guy, I didn't know I was there, and he was like, I'm just Dave. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, this is, this is something going on here. And even Mark Bronson sent me recently, like, his friends sent him, like, his, her son is watching that song on a loop now because it's making him feel better about getting dumped. Because he's like, well, if Ken gets dumped, you know, and it makes me realize that, like, it's not me, it's like, she's just on a different journey. <laughs> uh, America, of course, um, you and I have talked about this before, this amazing monologue. Every time I watch it, it gets me, and I've seen it many times. I know that Margot has told me that she cried every time you did it on set. I believe everyone was crying at one time or another. Um, how did you and Greta discuss that ahead of time and how did you build on it? And tell me how it felt actually shooting it. I think it was towards the end of the shoot, right? Yeah, we shot it really uh, towards the end, like months after we had begun um, shooting. It was, you know, it, it, we never really talked about the monologue separate from Gloria's entire journey, really. And similarly, there was a lot of texting going back and forth. And it was, sometimes it was like poetry or it was an article or it was an episode of something or an op-ed about womanhood. And we just kind of for months went back and forth sharing, you know, where we saw the essence of Gloria's journey, which of course is very much encapsulated in that monologue, just bubbling up in the culture, you know? And, and so by the time we got around to shooting it at the end of the shoot, I mean, I felt so ripe and ready. And, and you know, the truth is, is like, I, I just spent 40 years being a woman in the world. <laughs> like that's <laughs> mostly how I prepared for that monologue. Um, and, and Greta and I, you know, we had a lot in common in terms of like both being moms and having careers and being artists. And so we, we um, it felt like sleepover bonding on a really um, fundamental level. And, uh, and it was just, um, you know, I think that there's no, there's, the words were just true. And when I read the words on the page, it just, 
hit me as truth and I felt like my job was just not to get in the way of, of what was true, you know, and I think that's what resonates, not, again, not just with women, with people of all genders who feel like seen and reflected in the, like you said, you know, Ken and, and all kinds of people are also damaged by the same systems, right? And, and Credit had said that she looked around and the, the guys on the crew were sort of wiping away tears and they had their own either version um, of their own or, or like a relationship or a witnessing of someone they loved having that experience, you know? So um, I, I just feel like it was such a gift that Greta and Noah, but I suspect probably really Greta put on the page. Um, and, and you know, yeah, we just, we, we connected to it as much as we could personally, but at the end of the day, it was just about like letting the simple truth come through. Were you a Barbie owning girl as a kid? No, I was I was not at all. I I mean, we like couldn't afford Barbies growing up. My cousin had Barbies that I kind of played with at her house. But you know, I had never in my wildest dreams desired to be a part of a Barbie movie, you know? And and when the script came my way, what was so compelling was Margot's involvement and Greta's involvement and saying, okay, here are two incredibly talented, intelligent, deep artistic women. What are, why? Like, why are they doing this and what are they gonna do with it? And and once you read that script, it was just unbelievable. I mean, I felt giddy with excitement, just as a woman in the world, that this was the Barbie movie no one asked for, but that we were gonna get. <laughs> and I had no investment in Barbie whatsoever. And by the end of reading the script, I was I was in. I, I said to Mark Ronson very um, boldly when he came to Barbie dance rehearsal, I said to him, I think there's gonna be a before Barbie and an after Barbie, like in this industry, in terms of the permission that people feel in storytelling and what's possible. And, I, and that's how I felt when I first read the script. Like, my God, what a what a masterpiece, what a gift that Greta and Noah gave us. It definitely is. You're right. I think it's definitely set a precedent and will change the kinds of films that will get financed going forward. And that's an amazing thing. Thanks to you, Margot. Um, I have to say, I think I would have absolutely loved to have had a shame Barbie or a cellulite Barbie as a kid, and I'm hoping that that becomes a thing. Um, but like Kate's character, Weird Barbie, all my Barbies had no hair and had their legs at weird weird unnatural angles so um, tell us about coming to the role of weird barbie did you immediately go this is going to be amazing what was the process i feel nervous <laughs> <laughs> this is my first sex screening and being in a room full of peers I... <laughs> You tell me. <laughs> um, what was the question? No, I, I well, I I heard so, um, my agent called um, and was like, "There's a role in the Barbie movie," and I was like, "Pour moi." <laughs> he was like, "It's called Weird Barbie." I was like, <laughs> and, um, I uh, I read it and I was like, I don't have to change a line. <laughs> Usually, I feel uh, um, compelled to and want to, you know, put my own like spin on the dialogue and stuff. And I was like, wow, this is what I would write. Only it's. 10,000 times better, and I don't have to, uh, I'll, I'll just say exactly what this is. Okay. And so that was amazing. And then my biggest thing became like, what are the clothes? Because 
we know the hair of these Barbies. That's easy, but they're always naked. <laughs> <laughs> the clothes have been flushed in the toilet and burned and buried with the dog. And um, what will I wear? <laughs> and um, that was the funnest part of creating the character, as it were, um, working with the amazing um, costume designer and the, and working on the hair and the makeup was like such a such a fun journey. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that, you know what I love is that the dog that poops yeah. was a real thing. And it was discontinued because the magnets didn't work on the poop. And it was like a danger to children. But I absolutely love that that's a real thing. Yeah, there was a lot of, there was a lot of um, freaky weird stuff and real stuff. And um, we told the truth. All the things have to tell the truth. And, um, I just was so, I, I, it's so amazing to be part of something like this with the, you know it's crazy but um mm -hmm. like i specifically loved weird barbie because i feel like girls that age who are doing that to their dolls <laughs> are just trying to be themselves and express what they feel inside <laughs> and how they don't they don't feel like this they feel like <laughs> and, um, I wanted to I wanted to speak to them. <laughs> a little thing that that wasn't your actual leg at that angle. <laughs> I can't clear that up. <laughs> that will remain a mystery. <laughs> no, it went my leg. <laughs> I can't do that. I heard that there were holes in the scenery in which to put your actual leg at the same time. Yes. Which so the genius. stance was not, it was like... <laughs> Listen, please. <laughs> we, uh, I adore your character in this movie. It's amazing. I have to say, I think she's an amazing woman, Ruth Handler, who I play. But I had that some girls came up to me the other day on the street. <gasps> You're Barbie's mother. Oh my God. How does it feel to be Bobby's mother? It feels really good. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, she, uh, the, the words that Greta wrote, uh, Greta and Noah, I, you know, wrote are, were just, there was no way to screw them up. They were just brilliant. And they had so much emotion just in it. You'd have to, didn't really, it felt like I didn't have to do anything. It'd just be there. Just be, I, I, most, of, most of my work, almost all of my work was, was Margot. And, um, and it was just a, a complete joy to be with her who does not have a false note either. That she is just, I mean, she's just right there always. And, and I feel like that's true with all your work, because I'm a huge fan, you know, as I've told you. I mean, I really do. I really am. And, um, but I, I did some research on this woman, Ruth, you know, who I was going to play. And she was quite an interesting person, because aside from creating the Barbie, because that's the story that's been told, her daughter, whose name is Barbara, she named it after her daughter, Barbara. By the way, her son was named Kenneth. So she, yeah, she got Ken. So I guess she thought a lot about him. <laughs> um, uh, but she, she um, was the co-owner of Mattel. But apparently, according to all reports, she was the brains behind the operation. And um, I think that, you know, women can do it ethic is so completely in this movie it's 
just so empowering in every way. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but it just is. And uh, aside from uh, Mattel and all that, she, as I say at one point in the movie, uh, I that I had a mastectomy, and she had a she had a double mastectomy, and when she was healed, she realized there was no really there's nothing you could do at that time in our culture in our world to make your breasts look like they were real, they were just flat, mm -hmm. and so she created the first. Uh, breast prosthesis oh. and it's still sold today it's a bra it's a bra for people who've had their breasts removed and she made the first one and um, you know and she she went on uh, she was already you know she she liked being in the spotlight I, I guess and she thought it was a very important message to tell people about and she I know she I saw somewhere that she was on some show and she opened her shirt and said, you see, how does it look? You know, it was like she, she's showing the, that bra that she made. And um, she was just an amazing person. Uh, and, you know, what else to say? My, 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 I didn't have Barbies, but my daughters had Barbies. And they did, they, every one of their Barbies was a weird Barbie. <laughs> Eventually, I mean, they loved playing with them like they were gorgeous. But gee, they also loved taking their heads off, <laughs> filling them with water, and you know, you know, throwing them around in the bathtub, and <laughs> uh, pulling their hair, you know, and then fix their hair, mom. Well, make make it better. I said, okay. Well, then don't pull it out every time. <laughs> I'll do my best. Yeah. But uh, they were Barbies were huge in our house. We had Barbie shows where they would just everybody has to sit there. Everybody has to sit there, and anybody who was at the house had to sit around while <laughs> my two girls came out and did some really stupid shows. You know? <laughs> <laughs> They're Barbies. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was just so wonderful. And I just want to say one thing about, you know, the movie being for everyone, not just women and girls, is that the other day I was hiking in the park, and I live around the corner from a canyon, and uh, this man was sitting on the trunk of his car, which was open, um, putting on his shoes like he had just done a hike, and he, he waved to me, and he, you know, he said, I really loved you in Barbie. Um, I, I know that movie's not for me, but I just have to say it wasn't made for me. But I said, of course it was made for you. It was made for everybody. It was made for everyone. And it was like people are, there are men who are, just love the movie and it's hard for them to say it, you know? But man, I, I've seen more men cry over that movie than women, I think. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just thrilled that I'm a part of it. I have to add, when we did our preview screenings, that we do recruited screenings, and you know, then you've got 400 pieces of paper of responses from people, you know, saying what they liked and didn't like about the movie, um, and it's divided into demographics. Young teenage boys loved Ruth. That was like, it was all, I was always like, they're gonna love the beach battle, they're gonna love the, the, you know, the fart jokes before we took out that fart joke, but whatever, I was like, I thought I knew the things that, and they all, like, not obviously all, but like the majority, and very specifically that demographic, teenage young boys loved Ruth. They'd always be like, I love the scene with Ruth, I love when Ruth did this. Yeah, it was really interesting. So yeah, the movie is for everyone. <laughs> Um, I absolutely love your opening scene where you just shred Margot and reduce her to tears. Um, but your character is this really important counterpoint to, you know, all the, the kind of, oh, Barbie's fantastic, you know, and you provide this kind of, wait, why are, why are we being told we can do anything but only if we look like this? 
Mm-hmm. So tell us about how it felt to deliver those lines to Margot, which were pretty harsh. Um, and just putting that scene together and, and what that experience was like for you. Yeah, Mom, can you open my water? I did try and I can't do it. <laughs> my hands are really sweaty, so thanks so much. Um, <laughs> sorry, I was waiting this whole time. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so obviously you can't yell at Margaret. <laughs> you can't. Um, and staring at her and as she would like truly cry and I just have to like double down and just really ruin her, it hurt, but it, you know, it, yeah, it, it's necessary to give that different point of view and I know many people that like, when you hear Barbie, like, we don't, like, we don't, what, what is this going to do? But yeah, I mean, growing up I, I had the big dream house and I just put Monster High dolls in there because <laughs> I just liked, I was that kid, I had Monster High dolls. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, especially me who obviously doesn't look like stereotypical Barbie, I don't have blonde hair and blue eyes and whatever. I, growing up, it's like, obviously now they have, thankfully, so many different types of, of dolls for kids to play with, but there wasn't many. And uh, obviously, you know, you want to be represented growing up, especially in toys that everyone has and your friends have in your house. So having that, that different point of view, I feel like, was, was re- good and refreshing. And obviously at the end, Sasha wanted to stick up for Barbie and she wanted Barbie to have the ending she deserved because it wasn't her fault at the end of the day. So yeah, I mean Sasha Sasha's fun. She's misunderstood you guys, okay? And she's not a bully. Um she's just very strongly opinionated and she communicates that in a very specific way. Yeah, but you know, yelling at her wasn't easy. But again, it was just I had I had to. <laughs> It had to be done. I, I love it when she she's like, "What is this song?" You got? <laughs> that song actually was stuck in my head forever. Also, I remember the scene where you, America and Margaret had to sing that song together, and I was in the back just trying not to die laughing. I was just trying to be like the angsty teen, like, ugh, they're so embarrassing. But I just wanted to either join them or just cry laughing in the back of that car. Um, and obviously. Margaret, you're too hard on yourself with your voice. You sound great, but you were so nervous. And I just remember, I just remember you being like, do, no, do I have, you don't have to hear me sing this, do you? And it, that whole thing was, it was great. And America, you have pipes. I don't want to hear it. Like, you can sing. Okay? America, you can sing. Yeah. I, I, I just remember about that scene that, like, we thought we were just shooting, like, a snippet of the song. And then Greta came over and she's like, the whole thing. And we're like, we don't know that one. <laughs> it's like complicated. I mean, they, it's not straightforward and it's just repeating, like, a bridge or whatever. It's like, there's a lot of very philosophical. Very wordy. Yeah. I remember they printed it out. They printed the lyrics on, like, three pages and you're just, like, trying to memorize the whole song. And this, little amount of time but I think also Ryan came to my rescue because he could also sense how mortified I was to be singing in front of everyone and he joined in in the car and like set up and you sang extra loud and you didn't need to do that and I'll always appreciate it. This is the only billion dollar movie solely directed by a woman. Wow. It actually grossed 1.4 billion last year. Globally, the biggest film of the year. Um, But there was a lot, obviously, of online discourse around the Oscar nominations. I want to say there is so much to celebrate. It's your first producing nomination. You've got Best Picture, America, amazing. There is so much to celebrate. The SAG Ensemble nomination, your acting nomination. But it it had to feel pretty intense because there was so much love for this movie and a lot of people had a lot of feelings about that. Uh, did, was there anything that you wanted to speak to about that scenario, how it felt? Because it was quite a kind of tense time. I mean, like you said, we're 
beyond ecstatic <coughs> that we've got eight Academy Award nominations. <laughs> and so wild. And already, we set out to do something that would shift culture, affect culture, or just make some sort of impact. And it's already done that and some, like way more than we ever dreamed it would. Um, and that that is truly the biggest reward that could come out of all of this. And I'm so, so obviously ecstatic for with everyone getting the nods that they've had is just incredible. And, and the best picture, not obviously I think Greta should be nominated as a director because what Woo! she did is... Yeah. Yeah. It's like a once in a career, once in a lifetime thing what she pulled off. It really is. But it's been an incredible year and like for all the films and you know, there's there's no way to feel sad when you know this work. I'm really glad she got the screenplay nomination with Noah too. That's it's just so well deserved. It's also I don't know, like all things to do with Barbie, it's not really about I don't know, I just suspect it's it's bigger than us. It's bigger than this movie. It's bigger than our industry. It's, I don't know, when people feel that way, I, I think they're feeling it for themselves and for the world that they're in, as opposed to this specific thing. Well, looking around at all the people dressed in pink, it's definitely a cultural movement more than anything, and that's just everything that you could have wished for and more, I imagine. Um, can any of you, just to close out, offer some of the best, best fan reaction or even family reactions that you've had? something that really moved you? I remember when I, when the movie first came out, I snuck into a theater with my brother, just to kind of see, similar to you in the bathroom, listening to what people have to say. I just wanted to see everyone's live reaction. Um, so I just found like an empty seat and there was this girl in front of me and she was watching, she was just watching the movie and I believe it was the part either where it was either your monologue or when, when I was screaming at something. It was like a big, big part of the movie. And I was just watching her watch the movie. And I could just tell she was so touched by it. And she was like in her own little land. And she was dressed in pink. And she had like the prettiest blonde hair. And I was like, okay, I've been staring at this random girl for a little bit. I should probably go. Um, so I just remember like I, I tapped on her shoulder. I said, you look so beautiful. And she was like, so confused <laughs> like where did i just like spawn from and how long have i been there and that whole thing but it was just it was just wonderful to watch her and have it soak in for the first time for her and it, it was just a really nice moment she was so confused but you know it, th those little moments is what i feel like means so much to, to me and everyone who's part of this film it's just how it affected the, the people individually and i also remember all of my guy friends and from high school, I didn't know how the hell they were going to respond to this movie. <laughs> but they loved it, and they came and watched it with me, and they wore pink, and they asked their sister for their pink, whatever, and they were fully in it. And I was like, mad respect for you, damn. Um, but they loved it, and then, you know, drove home listening to I Spice's song, and it was great. <laughs> I'll I add to that. I remember opening weekend, a friend of mine, um, uh, texted me and he's like took his three-year-old daughter and five-year-old son which is the exact age as my kids actually to see Barbie and he said that they were walking out and neither of them said anything the whole walk to the car and then they got in the car and his three and a half daughter goes daddy I'm the boss now <laughs> <laughs> Did the construction workers ever finish the wall? <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks to come up with. Like, that's what you've been thinking about? Two weeks? <laughs> so there's a difference. I don't know. <laughs> Not to generalize, but. <laughs> I, I have one. Um, when uh, <laughs> Barbie, in the, in the early days of the movie having opened, I was, I was in New York doing something, and um, I got a call and the number was my daughter Lucy's number and um, so I picked it up hi and all I heard was two voices hers and a man's voice <laughs> we, we, uh, we just uh, we saw uh, we saw. <laughs> 
could not, could not get the words out that they had just gone to see Barbie and could not stop crying. My daughter and Danny, my husband. Yeah, it was, you know, and, he's, and he went on and on and on about how this movie should win best movie, best this, but every single one of and every category. <laughs> we've got time for and I just want to thank all of you for being here congratulations on all of your nominations so well deserved give it up for